Chapter 14 The Sheep and Goats The Sheep The sheep are represented at the present time by several wild species, one of which is found in northern India, east of the Indus, in the Punjab, and in Sindh, one in North America, and another in North Africa. The rest inhabit the high ground of Europe and Asia, as far south as the Himalaya. These mountains, with the adjacent plateau of the Pamirs and the great ranges of Central Asia, form the main home of the group. Wild sheep are of various types, some so much like the goats that it is difficult to draw a hard and fast line between them, while others, especially the curly-horned Argalis, Bighorns, Uriel, and Kamchatka wild sheep, are unmistakably ovine in type. The wild original of the domesticated breeds of sheep is unknown, but the extreme differences between various breeds of tame sheep, as for instance between the smooth-coated, drooping-eared breed of Nubia and the curly-horned, woolly sheep of Dorsetshire, must not be allowed to divert the attention from the considerable likeness of habit which still remains between other breeds and the wild species. Domesticated sheep, which live on hills and mountains, are still inclined to seek the highest ground at night. The rams fight as the wild rams do, and many of them display activity and powers of climbing and of finding a living on barren ground scarcely less remarkable than in the wild races. The apparent absence of wool in the latter does not indicate so great a difference as might be thought. The domesticated sheep have been bred by artificial selection for unnumbered ages in order to produce wool. It is said that in some of the wild breeds there is an underfur which will felt like wool. Most of the species are short-tailed animals, but this is not the case with the Barbary wild sheep. Wild sheep are mainly mountain-living animals or frequenters of high ground. They generally, although not always, frequent less rugged country than that affected by the wild goats, and some are found at quite low levels. The altitude at which other wild sheep are found is, however, very great. On the Pamirs it reaches 20,000 feet. Here the country is quite open. The European Mouflon The only wild sheep of Europe is the Mouflon, found in the mountains of Corsica and Sardinia, its height at the shoulder is about 27 inches. In the rams, the horns are strong and curved into a spiral, forming almost a complete circle. The hair is close and in winter has a woolly underfur. In summer and autumn, the coat is a bright red-brown on the neck, shoulders, and legs. The rump and underparts are whitish and the back and flanks marked with a white saddle. In winter, the brown becomes darker and the white saddle broader. A rather larger mouflon is found on Mount Elbers in Persia, in Armenia, and in the Taurus Mountains. A smaller variety exists in Cyprus, where it has been preserved since the British occupation. The mouflon is a typical wild sheep. In Sardinia and Corsica are dense scrubby forests of tall heather, some five feet high. This machia is practically impenetrable to hunters. When alarmed, the mouflon dash into it and are safe. The machia has preserved two very interesting survivals of antiquity, the mouflon and the Corsican or Sardinian bandit. The Corsican bandit, like the mouflon of the same island, is nearly extinct. In Sardinia, both flourish. Many English sportsmen have had their first taste of big game shooting in the difficult pursuit of the mouflon on the Sardinian mountains. Some declare that the sport is so fascinating that they have seldom found much to equal it since. Mr. S. H. Whitbread, whose notes in the Encyclopedia of Sport are very full on this subject, deems that the best season to stalk mouflon is in October or November. The animals are then less disturbed by shepherds and dogs, and the mouflon are on the move and more easily seen during the day than in summer when they feed at night and rest or sleep by day. Sir E. G. Loder has a small herd of mouflon running wild in his park at Leonard's Lee, near Horsham. They have a specially built mountaintop of stone to make a home of, but are free to feed where they like in the park. They produce lambs yearly. 
it is an interesting sight to see the quick rush of the little flock when frightened to their sheltering place, led by an old white-saddled ram. The Argolies The Argolies are the largest of all living wild sheep. Some measure from 3 feet 9 inches to 4 feet at the shoulder. The horns are broad, corrugated, and curling in the male, and in the female, short, erect, and curving backwards. The male Tibetan argali has a ruff on the throat. The usual color is a stony gray, mingled with white in the summer, in the case of the old males. The name is applied collectively to several wild sheep found in northern and central Asia. Whether these are only varieties or separate species, it is difficult to say, but the following are some of the most marked forms. The Siberian Argali is the characteristic wild sheep of the rocky hills and mountains of southern Siberia, the Altai Mountains, and northern Mongolia. The horns curve so as to form more than a complete circle. The upper parts are tinged with gray and the lower are white. The Tibetan Argali is a little smaller in size and has slightly smaller horns. The rams have also a large white ruff on the throat. These sheep descend in winter to the lower valleys of the Tibetan Plateau, returning to the higher ground in spring. The lambs are born in May or June. Littledale's sheep is a smaller animal found on the Sayer Mountains in the Great Altai on the northwestern border of Mongolia. It is darker in color than the Argali or Marco Polo's sheep and has dark underparts. Writing of the Argali of southern Siberia, the naturalist Brem says that when the Tartars want mutton, an Argali hunt is organized. The Tartar hunters advance on their horses at intervals of 200 or 300 yards, and when the sheep are started, generally manage by riding, shooting, coursing them with dogs, and shouting to bewilder, shoot, or capture several. On the high plateau of the Pamirs and the adjacent districts, Marco Polo's sheep is found. The rams are only slightly less in size than the Siberian Argali, the hair is longer than in that species, and the horns are thinner and more slender and extend farther in an outward direction. An adult ram may weigh 22 stone. The first description of the sheep was given by the old traveler whose name it now bears. He said that on the Pamir Plateau, wild animals are met with in large numbers, particularly a sheep of great size, having horns three, four, and even six palms in length. The shepherds, or hunters, form ladles and vessels from them. In the Pamirs, Marco Polo's sheep is seldom found at less than 11,000 or 12,000 feet above the sea. In the Tian Shan Mountains, it is said to descend to 2,000 or 3,000 feet. They prefer the hilly, grassy plains, and only seek the hills for safety. On the Pamirs, they are said to be very numerous in places, one hunter stating that he saw in one day not less than 600 head. The Bighorn Sheep of America and Kamchatka North America has its parallel to the Argolis and the famous Bighorn. It is now very rare, even in northern Canada, and becoming scarce in the United States, though a few are found here and there at various points on the Rocky Mountains as far south as Mexico. In habits, it is much the same as other wild sheep. That is to say, it haunts the rock hills and badlands near the mountains, feeding on the scanty herbage of the high ground, and not descending unless driven down by snow. The bighorn sheep are very partial to salt, Mr. Turner Turner, who hunted them in East Kootenai, says, quote, Wild sheep make periodical excursions to the mountaintops to gorge themselves with salty clay. They may remain from an hour to two days, and when killed, their stomachs will be found full of nothing but the clay formed from denuded limestone, which they lick and gnaw until sometimes deep tunnels are formed in the cliffs, large enough to hide six or seven sheep. The hunter, standing over one of these warrens, may bolt them within two yards of him. In the dead of winter, sheep often come to the woods to feed on fir trees. At such times, they may be seen mixed with black and white tailed deer, low on a river bank. I have known them come within forty yards of an inhabited hut. End quote. 
While on the subject of the fondness of sheep and deer for salt, we may mention an anecdote told by Mr. H. C. Nelson in Country Life. He was sleeping with two other friends in a hut in the mountains where some miners had lived for a time. These men, when they washed up their pots and pans, threw the slops away at a certain place close by the hut. As all water used for cooking meat has salt put into it, a little salt remained on the surface. This the wild deer had found out, and were in the habit of coming to lick it at night. Mr. Nelson had a shot at one some twenty yards from the hut. The bighorn sheep stands from three feet two inches to three feet six inches at the shoulder. The horns are of the general type of the Argolese, but smoother. Another bighorn is found in Kamchatka. There is also a beautiful white race of bighorn inhabiting Alaska. The typical Rocky Mountain race is browner than the Asiatic Argolese, and in winter is dark even beneath the front parts of the body. It is not found on the high peaks of the Great Ranges, but on difficult, though lower ground on the minor hills. The Uriel The vast range of the Himalaya affords feeding ground to other species of wild sheep and wild goat, so different in the shape of the horns that the variations of the ovine race under domestication need not be matter for wonder when so much variety is seen in nature. The Uriel or Shah, is found in northwest India, on the Trans-Indus Mountains, and in Ladakh, northern Tibet, Afghanistan, Baluchistan, Turkestan, and southern Persia. The horns make a half-curve backwards and are flattened. The angle with the horizontal line across the ears is about half a right angle. The coat is of a reddish-brown color, with white on the belly, legs, and throat. This species has a very wide geographical distribution and is the only wild sheep found in India proper. The Barbary sheep, Aoudad, or Arui. This is a large wild sheep of the North African highlands. The old rams have a very fine appearance with a long flowing beard or mane and large horns. These wild sheep, though somewhat goat-like in appearance, are typical of their race in general habits. They live in the Atlas Range and in the splendid heights of the Aures Mountains, which lie at the back of Algeria and fringe the Great Sahara Desert. In the isolated and burning rocks which jut up in the desert itself into single mountains, they are also found, living on ground which seems absolutely destitute of water, grass, or vegetation. They live singly or in small families, but the rams keep mainly alone. Sometimes they lie in shallow caves during the heat of the day. These caves smell like a sheep fold. More generally, the sheep repose on some shelf of rock where they exactly match the color of the stone and are invisible. The ground is among the most difficult in which any hunting is attempted, except perhaps in chamois stalking. But the pursuit seems to fascinate sportsmen. Mr. A. E. Pease recently gave some charming descriptions of the silence, the rugged rocks, and the astonishing views over the great orange Sahara Desert seen from the tops of these haunts of the Barbary sheep, mountains on the summits of which his Arab guides would prostrate themselves in evening prayer as the sun sank over the desert, and then, rising, once more resume the chase. The young lambs of the Barbary sheep are charming little creatures, more like reddish kids. They can follow the mother over the steepest ground at a great pace. When caught, as they sometimes are by the Arabs, they soon become tame. The tail is longer than in other wild sheep, and in the males, a large mane covers the chest. The burrow or blue sheep. This species possibly indicates the transition point from the sheep to the goats. It was pointed out by Mr. Brian Hodgson that it had certain features more like the goats than the sheep, and later other writers laid stress on structural differences of the same kind, both in skull and horns. It has not the disagreeable odor of the goats, but the black markings which separate the white of the belly from the brown of the flanks and run down the front of the legs are like those seen on some goats. The horns rise in a curve outwards and downwards. The largest are only some 30 inches long. Burl are perhaps the commonest of all Asiatic wild sheep. 
They inhabit the whole length of the higher Himalayan range and are found over and round the Central Asian Plateau as far north as Yarkand. The horns make two half moons at right angles to the skull. Unlike some of the other wild sheep, burul often climb the very highest ground of all. Much of the best burul ground is above 17,000 feet high, and, as Mr. Whitbread remarks, this alone makes the chase of such an animal difficult. As in the mouflon, the mutton is excellent. There is no difficulty whatever in taming these wild Himalayan sheep. Those in the zoological gardens are practically domesticated. End of section 42